we are going to talk about brushes, brush strokes, and a little bit of brush care. So what I'm going to do is turn off the sound, Amy. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I have a new helper tonight. So good evening, Miss Lucy. Talk about the brushes, brush strokes, hurry up, and a little bit of brush care. So what I'm going to hold on a second. Hurry up. Turn off the sound, Amy. Turn it off. Sorry, I have a new helper tonight. So do you not know? Lucy, hold on a second. She doesn't know how to do it. Okay. All right. So tech lesson 101. My granddaughter is helping me. Sorry about that, guys. Um, Jenny just jumped on. She has been stuck in traffic with the flat tire, so we weren't sure if she would uh, be back in time. So I was trying to train Miss Abigail uh, to help me. So good evening, Robin. Hello. Um, so anyway, we're going to do brushes, brush strokes tonight. Um, we still have uh, we have a lot of people that are joining us from the clay share group, and I had showed some brush strokes on uh, the demonstrations that I did a week ago. And so I just continue with that and do a little bit of education on brushes. So do a few things, we'll give away a few um, brushes also. Okay. So if you're new to me, um, I broadcast live on Facebook and YouTube. We may in the future just do YouTube and just share it to Facebook. So uh, I'll still uh, have the reminder out there for you okay so i may do a, a quick test over the weekend uh doing a different platform and i'll let you know hey miss nancy good evening clay share group all right awesome awesome so we're going to continue with some of the same stuff that uh we did uh on the clay share and that i did last week um i'm a little under the weather i wasn't feeling good yesterday afternoon and evening um and I'm still really, I should have not done this tonight, but I didn't want to disappoint you guys, so I'm here. Okay. Hey, Miss Luann. Okay. So what I'm going to do is switch to my overhead camera and uh, we'll get started. Okay. Let me hide. Oops. Nope. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> it's called practice. Okay, so you should still be able to hear me. So first of all, um, the website is coloursforearth.com. Uh, we have, because we also do ceramic and we do glass enamels, and then we have a brush company. So if you have purchased any of our enamels or anything that works on glass, we have a private Facebook group called CFE Glass Color Artist and you need to make sure that you answer those questions that it asks you, okay? And if you're joining us on Facebook and not on YouTube, make sure you go to YouTube, search for Paula McCoy. It'll have the CFE logo. Subscribe, click the bell so that you'll get notifications when I'm going live or I upload a video. There are playlists out there on the YouTube that um, deal with uh, enamel, ceramics, uh, there's all different types. So check those out. And uh, if you're looking for something, you know, specific, that will get you to the right place. Okay. All right. So last week, I did a little bit about talking about brush strokes. Okay, and how to, and just some basic general information, because sometimes I take things for granted that other people don't know. Um, so if you have a piece and you're trying to divide it to do, and see, I've still got paint on there from last time, uh, divide it so that you can do some brush strokes. There's a quick and easy way to do that. Okay. And I'm going to show you on another piece. Jenny, my volume is okay. Just before I, okay. All right, so what I did, this is just a bisque ceramic plate, okay? And I'll do it on the back because I've already done it on the front. So a good way to divide it if you're wanting to do a brushstroke pattern is divide that in half. And I've just got a regular lead pencil and then divide it in half again. And this works with any kind of shape, okay? And then you can divide those in half. 
and then divide those in half again, depending on what your stroke is or what you're wanting to do. So that's a quick and easy way. Uh, you could do it with the watercolor markers. Uh, remember to not do, do this with a Sharpie on ceramics, okay? Statler Triplus Fine Liners. Let me get the package, okay? So make sure it says Fine Liner. They have a Sharpie point to them, okay? Itty bitty, okay? So you can literally, uh, so if you maybe you wanted to go ahead and put your strokes on here so that you knew exactly where you were going to be okay or you can just wing it it's totally up to you so this one i would go and maybe you want them all the same way or you can do them opposite ways if you want but you could do that with the marker okay so that you had something there so that it um it's a visual and it keeps you in place if you're not uh, familiar with doing strokes and you you know you're just uncomfortable with it that's an easy way to do that so tonight i'm going to use um, some color concentrates this is cc 112 candy apple red the color concentrates are a translucent one stroke or easy stroke type product they come in one ounces two ounces pints and gallons okay always shake them they are thixotropic meaning they congeal in the bottle so you need to shake them whether you're using them on um, earthenware for a low fire 06, 04, or if you're working on stoneware or porcelain, you still need to shake them no matter what, okay? And then I'm gonna show you my palette cam and uh, we have what? We have someone from Hawaii. Awesome, Hello. hey Margie. Are you on vacation down there? Or do I, I have, the, I have wrong the wrong Margie? Margie. I'm, thinking, I'm thinking. Welcome, welcome, welcome. welcome. All, right. All right. Tell us where you're from. Be sure to comment. comment. That's how you, That's get, how you in get, in get in the drawing at the end. The end. Okay. okay. Jenny will Jenny spend, spend the will. will. Good evening, Miss Ginger. Ginger. We are, we are on vacation. vacation. I don't say you're, you're from, from Texas. Texas. If I remember right. If I got, if I got the right Margie, although there's a lot of people with the same uh, names. names. Okay. okay, and, and I, I need to switch, switch these cameras because you, you don't, don't need, need to see my palette cam, cam that big. big. Okay. okay, so, so you, you can, can kind of see how I'm loading the brush is why I want to have that camera on there. So I'm going to just use, uh, this is the number 4, 2004 KB, meaning Kalinsky Blend. It's a natural hairbrush versus a synthetic, a synthetic a bunch of comments that I'm echoing. Okay. All right. Let's see if that fixed it. I added that other camera. So that's probably what it was. Okay. Double voices. All right, Marie, tell me if it's fixed. It'll take about eight seconds for the delay. Hi there, Betsy. Sorry, I had two mics. Okay, we're good now. All right, so back to, um, this is one of the brushes I'm gonna give away tonight. Um, this is a number eight square shader. It is a Taclon brush, so education. So these little caps that you get on your new brushes, don't put them back on, throw them away, or you can dip them in your paint and you can come over and you can make circles with them. Okay, but do not put them back on. Okay, they are for shipping purposes only because more, more than likely you're going to get a hair that comes out and then you've ended up ruining your brush. Always dampen your brush in water and blot on the paper towel before you start. Okay, so this is a natural hair brush, which is like the hair on our head. Okay, this is a synthetic or man made brush. And let me zoom in. So a natural hair, like I said, just like the hair on your head. Oops, sorry. Okay, so they look a little bit different. This is usually brown and it's like your hair. The other ones are more of a golden. Some of them have a darker tip on them, but they're more synthetic or yellow type look to them. Okay, that would be a man-made one. Okay, so always wet your brush first 
blot it on a paper towel because you don't want the water in there. But it's just like, think of it as when you're washing your hair, you want to, you always put water in your hair first and then you add the shampoo. Okay. So do the same with your brush. That's a good way to remember it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to fully load that round. So I'm dipping into the color and I'll even put this up here so you can see better. Dip in, fully load, get that, so to speak, the shampoo on the brush, okay? And then you can kind of shape it to a point, all right? And let's do one of these comma strokes. So I'm going to, the brush normally is just like slightly tilted back when you're doing the stroke, okay? I'm going to stand little further back so that you can see the stroke and I'm going to angle my plate. So you press down, the more pressure you put, the larger the stroke, start pulling, 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 and then lift to a point. So what I did was I slightly turned my brush to get kind of gather all those hairs back up to get it to a point. So let's do another one right underneath there. So press to get the size I want, pull, pull, start, lift, 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 and come off to the tail. Now, did you notice how slow I did that? A brush stroke is the combination of color, pressure, and the motion. Whether you're curving or you're just pulling straight, it doesn't matter, okay? So if I just wanna pull straight, press, pull, lift, lift, slightly turn the brush, and you get a tail. Don't pull up and don't do it fast. I do my strokes, not just for you guys. This is the way I do them all the time. If you lift the brush too fast, it's the airplane does not go to the end of the runway and stand straight up. It gently comes off the runway most of the time. It's supposed to, okay? So think of it that way. So I'm gonna tilt this so you can see it a little better. So press, pull, lift, 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 slightly turn it. So this is just barely a half a turn. I'm not even a half, maybe a quarter. And that just gathers all those tips up, all the hairs on the tip so that you get a nice fine point. So less pressure gives you smaller. So you, depending on the amount of pressure, you can do little itty bitty strokes. Same brush, same color, same load, color, pressure, and motion color, pressure, and motion. Any questions, Jenny? No questions? Okay. All right. Oh my goodness. We got 65 people on. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Be sure and comment. We have YouTube and Facebook going. Uh, Jenny will draw for prizes later at the end. So be sure and tell us where you're from. Uh, if you're in the clay share group, be sure and uh, say that, or you can tell us where you're from. Okay. Hey, Bobby. Vicki, all right, here we go again. Ready? Press to determine the size I want. Start pulling, pulling, lift, 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 slightly turning. So you can't even hardly see my hand turn to get that stroke. Same principle applies if we're going the other direction. Press, pull, lift, lift. Okay, smaller, smaller, and smaller. Okay, same brush. I didn't change the size. And it's easier to learn with a larger brush and then go to a smaller. Uh, and you'll find that you don't even need multiple brushes. Most of the time, you can actually use the same brush, just less pressure. So let's press and go this direction. And then you can press and go straight. Okay, so if I've divided my plate and I wanted to do a stroke coming down to do the division, I would just press, pull, lift, and lift. So that would make a nice divider if you want to start with something pretty simple. And then depending on how long the area is will depend on, so you're going to press and pull about half of the length and then start lifting to bring it to a tail. So however long, and maybe you just need you know, just a curve so that you know where your stroke's going to be and maybe one will be in and one will be out. That's what I did on this other one. Okay. And then where my lines were, 
is where I put the little dots and I'll show you how to do those also. Okay, so once again, I'm using the number 4-2000-4KB is our number on the website, coloresforearth.com. All right, let's do one coming straight down again. So press, pull, lift, 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 slightly turn and come. And I am anchoring myself. I either anchor with my pinky, but don't, you want to be sure that you can move and you can't see my shoulder, but you want to make sure that your whole arm can move. Don't restrict yourself and constantly turn your piece. Yes, we have a question. Um, Okay, so Lisa, you're asking about the Sumi brushes. They're not really made for brush strokes. These have a nice fine point. These are very soft and uh, what I call kind of limp. So I'm going to wet one. So when you wet it, see how it kind of just stays bent? So they're not really made for brush strokes. Can you use it? You can. These are just a different hair. These are a sable Kalinsky hair. Okay, there is a, it's a Klinsky and um, Taquan blend on this particular one, but the other ones that actually say Kalinsky, like here's our number four round, 5,000 number four, and that is, and you can see how you look at that and it's kind of bushy. It's dry. When your hair is dry, it goes out also. But when you wet that brush, so I'm just dipping it in my water bowl and wetting it, see, then it comes to a nice point. The other way is when you wet it, and I'll do this on, you actually take the brush and flick it like that, which got water everywhere, but you can see that it comes to a nice point and you know there's nothing wrong with that brush, okay? So, good evening, Miss Marie. Hey, Teresa Ann, Joy, welcome, welcome. So let me grab the um, similar size in the Sumi brush. Let me dampen that. I'm gonna blot on my paper towel and then I'll pick that color up. Now, can I do it with the Sumi? Yes. Try it, and if it doesn't work, you'll know why, okay? So here we go. Press, it, it just doesn't hold the shape. Pull, pull, and lift. You can... Okay, so Teresa has asked, will watercolor brushes work? Okay, so the only thing that I wanna say is, if the brush has been used in something else and you're using it with fired product that you're going to put in the kiln, okay, you need to be careful that that brush is completely clean. Even though you think it is, there may be color up. Any watercolor acrylics, oils, if they deposit onto your piece, yes, they burn away, but they can also cause a gray and black blemish on there, okay? So keep that in mind. Most people do not clean their brushes well enough. Okay. Hey, Scooby-Doo, <laughs> Mr. John, how are you? Welcome, welcome from Florida. Long time no talk. John used to come to the shows in Orlando when I used to go down there. All right, so let's do another one. So this is the number four round. Press, pull, pull, I'm halfway. I'm gonna start lifting the brush and slightly turn it so that I get to that point, okay? Sorry, I was a little high on that one. Press, pull, lift, 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 and come off to a point. Okay. So if you wanted to make the dots like I had on this other plate, okay, on the edge, that is just done with the handle of the brush. So depending on the size handle will determine how large or small that dot is. Okay. So let's do some red dots. So let me set that brush down. When you do it, no, the Kalinsky, Jenny's asking me a question. No, the Kalinskis are black handle on the website and they are in the 5,000 numbers. Okay. Abby says we have a question. Um, I think this was before all of those other questions. Okay. Lorelei do ask what brush is this and I believe. Did I answer it? That no, I believe that they're talking about the brush you're using. Okay, so somebody had asked which brush this was, so I'll 
talk about it again. Meet my granddaughter, Abby. <laughs> she's, uh, she's in training, we'll say for tonight. This is the number four. It's a 2000-4KB, meaning Kalinske blend. Okay. All right. So I was going to show you dots with the handle. So load. And I'm going to dot and continue to dot. And every time I keep going, it gets smaller and smaller. So we call those graduated dots. If you want the same size dot, you have to load for each dot to get the same size. Okay. You think we got another question? Yes. Okay. Um, Ginger. Okay. I don't know how to say the last That's name. That's all right. But, um, I know. What would you specifically use the semi brushes for? The Sumi brushes, what would, okay, so Ginger says, what would you use the Sumi brushes for? So those are for shading. And we did some of that on Clacier Con, and then I also did it um, on my live last week. So let me finish with the brushes, and then I'll show you a little bit of that, okay, if we have time. All right, so remember, you can go in different directions. You can nestle these strokes beside each other so that you've got different sizes. You can make the dots with the handle of the brush. Deborah says, hi, Abby. Hey, Deb. Make a cute heart. Oh, yes, you can do the heart. Uh, we called that uh, years ago. We used to call it the Dolly Parton heart. Um, you put two dots side by side, and then you kind of drag those together. It doesn't work as well, but it is a little heart shape. But yes, you can do that. Absolutely. I haven't done that in years. Thanks for reminding me. Oh, Donna says you have a... Abby does paint, but only acrylics. She hasn't painted in ceramics for quite a while. Okay. All right. So we got the comma stroke thing. I'm going to go to the square shader. Um, I'm going to use a larger one than what I'm giving away, but I want to be able to show you um, how to load with two colors. So remember what a brush stroke is, color, pressure, and motion. Okay, so I'm putting out two different uh, cerulean colors. I think you can see that. Okay, um, I always fully load with my light color. So I'm going to shampoo that brush, work it in on the side. Okay, let's make sure we understand. Work it in so that I have that blue. But can you see the nice chisel edge still? So this is the chisel here. You've got your bristles, the ferrule, and the handle. Okay, so I'm fully loading with the lighter blue. And then what I like to do is put the writing on the brush. All brushes have, uh, they tell you what size, what it is usually, uh, could have a name of somebody or the company name. Ours is Kala, which is my brush company. Um, writing in the brush towards you. So now when I'm going to corner load with the darker color, it's just on that bottom corner because I can read the writing. And then I'm going to blend, blend. So what I did was I put dark and I flipped it over. I didn't set right on top of it. I went dark next to dark. And I'm going to show you that on paper so that you can see it better for those of you that are new. So if this were my palette, I would blend, blend, blend flip the brush over and blend dark next to dark. If you went on top of your first stroke, you're just going to have dark all the way across. Okay. So every time after I do my first stroke, all I have to do is go back and corner, corner to pick up both of those colors. And I'm going to do it on my palette this time. And then I would blend quickly. Don't go really slow like that. You want to do it very fast because what it does is push that color across so that you have dark and it fades back into the light. Okay. All right. So let's go over here and do what I call a little wedge stroke. Okay. So when you're doing, and this is like a little leaf, you start with a V. So don't start on the squared off. We want to start on the angle. So I'm going to press pull, lift, lift, and slide off to a point. Okay. 
and I'm keeping my dark. I flipped my brush over. See, here's the writing, and now I'm flipped because I want the dark down where my stem would be if this were my stem down here. Okay, so press, pull, lift to a point. Press, pull, and lift. Now, remember when I did the comma strokes, I curved the brush. Watch my hand. I'm not curving the brush at all. And that's a uh, common mistake that a lot of people do. Flip my dark over. Press, pull, and lift. Press, pull, and lift. Press, and lift off. So I'm not turning it. I'm not, I'm not going like that. I'm not hooking the brush. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Talk to me. Tell me if that makes sense. And it absorbs differently in on the ceramic piece than it would on paper. So, okay, Abby says we have another question. Um, someone, uh, Leanne says that's just like one stroke. Can you? Yes. So, that? Leanne, this is like one stroke. Um, but the technical term is a wedge stroke. You can do, um, you can slide and then press and slide, which is an S stroke. So yes, it's very similar to one stroke. I mean, it is, it, different people call it different things. I've been doing stroke work for 30 plus years. Um, it just depends on who teaches you and what they call it, but they're, the basics are the same, correct. Okay, so let's look at it from this direction. So press to get the width and how fat you want it basically. Start lifting and then all you're doing is coming up on that chisel. So press and slide off, press and slide off, press and slide off. Okay, we have a question. Is the brush I'm using a blend or natural hair? This is a Kalinsky, so it's natural hair. It's Kalinsky is the highest grade of sable. And what happens is it's how the hairs are dressed um, it's kind of like when you buy shoes, uh, if you go to pay less, you're going to get something different than you get from Dillard's, you know, there, so think of it that way or a haircut or anything, uh, you pay for what you get. Okay. But Kalinsky is the highest grade. Um, there's very few people that have natural hair brushes out there right now because of the cost coming in, um, uh, from overseas where we have to get the heads and the head is like this portion, this is the handle. So we buy this and then we stamp the handles and attach them. Okay, Abby says we have a question. Uh, Therese, I think, do China paints behave similarly? Do China paints behave similar to this? You know, they're, they're going to be more gritty, Talisa, uh, Teresa, sorry, um, because they have frit in them, okay? And that's an overglaze product. So can you do it? It really depends on what you're mixing them with, uh, whether it's like a lavender oil. Um, it's been probably 22 years since I China painted, but um, can you do it if you have the right uh, mixture? Absolutely. You may have to do it in layers to get the depth that you want. Press, pull, and lift. Okay. Does that make sense on this stroke? Hopefully. Kalinsky is a wonderful for brush strokes. Yes, yeah, it is definitely, John. Um, it's it's the best. It's got the chisel edge. Um, you know, there's cheaper. So the round that I showed you, this is a blend of Kalinsky and Sable, where this, and you can't tell by looking at them, but this is a pure Kalinsky. This is our number four. So we have different sizes of the brushes. Now I'm going to pick up the synthetic one. This is the one I'm going to give away tonight. So this is the number eight. So this is a man-made. So it's like a yellow with a dark tip on there. So I'm just going to grab the darker color so it's easy for you to see. And then what I want to point out, some other little tip a lot of you may not know, these little nibs or uh, raised areas on your palettes, these little paint palettes, if you lay your brush between those, then it doesn't roll. That's kind of a neat little trick that a lot of people may not know about. Okay. Do we have another question? Yes. Um, 
Beth. Beth. Family. Okay. What size is the Kalinsky, Kalinsky that I'm using? Yeah. Okay, so Beth, this was a number eight that I was using. There's different sizes. They're more expensive because they're a better brush, okay? And then this is a number eight, but it's in the uh, synthetic. Okay, so it's going to be cheaper, like half the cost. So you can use this. You just have to load it more often. Can you see that? See how it's a little bit smaller, but it's finer. You have to load it more often. Okay, so the Kalinsky one is natural hair, like the hair on your head. It's going to see how much color is still in there. This one, it's got a waxy coating. It's mostly made for acrylics because acrylics are plasticky and they stick to that type of brush. So it doesn't absorb any of that. Everything's just laying on the top of the hairs. This one is just like our hair on our head. So it's keeping that moisture or color in there and you're able to do more strokes with it and not have to load as often. But can you use these? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Luann has a suggestion. Okay, so um, the proper care on your brush, Luann brought up a good point. So rinse it in water first. Okay, so let's bring my little water bowl over here. And no, I don't sell these. Um, this has a grid in the bottom. You would not use that, okay, with my brushes. Okay, there are brushes out there that you can use it. Just swish it in the water until you think you've got it clean. When you blot it on the paper towel, if you still see color, then you don't have it clean. Okay, so you may have to do that multiple times until it gets it out of there. Okay, hold on. Abby says we have another question. I'm going to continue with this. In just a second. Yes. What's the other question? Um, Joy says or asks, these are just chisel brushes. Okay. So, Joy, yeah. Joy, these are called square shaders. So they are squared off versus a round. Okay. So these are called square shaders. These are your rounds. So basically, you're just looking at the shape of them. But that's a great question because some people, if you've never done strokes, you don't understand that. Okay. So that's what that. So back to the care. Um, swish it clean. If you have, and I don't know where mine's at. A. Oh yes, I do. Hold on. So just a bar of Dove Ivory soap. Okay. So wet your brush, and then just work it back and forth on there. Just something, do not use Dawn detergent. And I think you can kind of see it's kind of bubbling up. And actually, I see some blue there. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. So then rinse it, blot it on your paper towel, and do that again. And now rinse it. And if you don't see any blue, then you know you're clean. Okay? Just a very gentle, whatever you would use on your face. Okay, ladies? Um, take care of it. I mean, think of it as your hair on your head. So you're going to treat it the same way. There are great brush cleaners out there. I, I don't know if Mako still makes theirs. Plaid makes uh, the Brush Plus. And if you were going to use this one, what I do at the end of the day, and don't leave your brushes in the water. I'm going to rinse my larger square. And I'm just swishing it back and forth, blotting it. Okay, so it has moisture in it. So you would come over here and just work that soap into the brush. And if you've seen a lot of blue coming out on your hand, you would know that you need to rinse and do, start over again. Okay. Why not Dawn? Okay, is the question. So Dawn has a degreaser. It's great for, I always say, duck feathers. Okay, it takes, <laughs> takes some, uh, the grease out of the duck feathers. So because of the degreaser, what happens is um, it gets down into the ferrule, which is the silver or gold part. Um, I don't know if I have a gold one here. But anyway, um, loosens the glue, and then it'll fall out. Your hairs will fall out. So I don't recommend Dawn at all. Okay, if you have a hair that goes wacky, maybe sticks out, you know, it's kind of got a bad hair day. 
something happened or you stuck the little cap back on there and shouldn't have and you've got a hair that goes out what you can do is actually put some of your own shampoo or conditioner either one into the brush work it until you get it to the proper shape so wet it kind of work that conditioner shampoo in there and then lay that brush flat to dry you can also go put that brush in the freezer for an hour and that's going to harden before you use it again you want to rinse it in the water just to get the sizing out so when you get a new brush there's sizing in there sizing is like a soap okay so this one was new when i took the cap off i went over there and i rinsed it okay so the same principle would work if you're trying to correct a brush and get a hair back in place okay if you're using acrylics once again you don't want to use the same brushes for your acrylics as you do for your fired product um, you also if you have a lot of color that gets up into the ferrule of the brush you can take believe it or not vodka or uh, rubbing alcohol and you can put some of that in a cup but never go up over this ferrule because a lot of your brushes are wood handle so just about a half an inch or so and let it sit in there for a few minutes and then work it out with the soap again and sometimes that will get some of the acrylic out of there if you have some of that stuck in there but i definitely would recommend separate brushes okay all right any other questions Jenny? Hey, Tammy, where is, I don't even know how to say that, Pala, I'm not sure, you're from Texas, whereabouts is that in Texas? You know, I've lived here 29 years and I still haven't ventured out to a lot of places. <laughs> Vodka fix all kinds of things, ha ha, that's cute, yeah. Well, you'd have to have it in your house. I don't, uh, I don't have, I don't drink. I may be driven to drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I've got now, I'm going to show you a liner. This is our 3600 number two. We have this in three different sizes. Very inexpensive for a Kalinske liner. Uh, this is the two, I believe we have the five aught and the 10 aught. So I'm pulling some of my color out into the middle and I dipped into water and just brought whatever water was on my brush and I'm just fully loading. So I'm pulling it through, pulling it through and I'm turning it over pull it, turn it over. So what that does is just coat all the hairs and it keeps my shape. Okay. Sometimes if I get some on the ferrule, I will wipe that off and you don't want water up here because the water can drip down onto your piece. Okay. So you would constantly come over here and there would be no reason if you had that big puddle of paint, you don't need to thin down that with water because it'll evaporate before you use it. Just take some out and I don't want it inside this little divot. I want it on like a tile or um, a wet palette or in one of these little palettes so that I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Any other questions before I go on, Jenny? Nope. Okay. All right. So you get to your point. Okay. And let's just pull a stem in. So if I put down pressure, it's going to be larger. Okay. So same thing, color, pressure, and the motion, however I'm turning it. So if I wanted to start over here with my stem, I can curve it that way. The amount of pressure, I'm gonna turn this sideways so you can see it instead of flipping to another camera. I don't wanna make everybody dizzy. The amount of pressure and then lift. You see how fine of a point you can get? So you could just sit here and ride on the very, very, very tip of it and you've got a nice fine line. Okay, we have another question. Wait. Okay, so somebody says you're using water instead of the extender. Yes, um, what I showed the other, that's mainly I use that whenever I do the Sumi shading. So I will, I will get into that in just a second. Okay, so here's our liner. So if we had stems, you can also, and then like curly cues, you know, little vines coming off of press and you lift when you turn and then press and lift when you turn and then press again. So that's the most common mistake is people don't um, lift when they get ready to turn it, but you can go on and on and on and on. Okay. 
are my colors true at cone five, six? Not exactly true. Okay, let me back off the camera. Well, I'm going to leave it here. So this, and there is a PDF. Jenny, if you'll post the link to the blog, um, the blog for ClayShare has the color wheels, and it also shows you how I antiqued with the color, and then I put the zinc-free. I used um, Amico's HF9. So this was the zinc-free glaze that I used on stoneware clay. Well, stoneware bisque. Okay, so they are to a point, but your greens will tend to brown out a little bit and some of the purples fade out. So, and the pinks, see, this is a pink, a mauve color. This is a cranberry color. So no, the red that I'm using tonight is this red and it stays red. And all I did was use pure color on this. It does, does you guys want to see the antiquing? With that, I can show you, but Jenny has posted the link to the blog and there's five pages to do with stuff that I showed on ClayShare Con and um, be sure and check that out. So you can just keep going and going with your liner. Okay. Okay, so somebody wants a list of the brushes uh, that I'm using. Um, Jenny has posted links to them. But yes, I can list them in a post on my personal page. I'd be happy to do that. Okay. And and I can do links at that time too. Okay, we have another question. Therese. Therese, um, um, the best to use a low fire clay. No, no. I w no, you can use the high fire. Hold on. So, like, here is... This is, uh, that's a glaze, of course. So this is number 160, 61, and two. So the three greens. So 60, 61, and two. I glazed over this section and then I left half of it unglazed, okay? So will they fire? Absolutely. And this is the 35, six, and seven. So see how the per they, they look bluer, more purpley blue, and then they fade out. So just like anything tested this is that's it so here's your your uh 150 i was using 151 and 152 for these strokes here's the same colors okay these are all color concentrates cc 151 152 i happen to have those here okay so this is 50 up here 51 is in the middle and 52 here Okay, so if you were, and this is uh, the 112 that I'm using. See how nice and bright. Now, I didn't put any glaze over this. Okay, so what I use is my Sumi brushes. And let's just do, um, I've got a, quite a bit of the dark here. So this is an 04 bisque stoneware. Okay, so this is cone 6 stoneware clay. And I bisque it to an 04 and I'm using pure color, pure color, just tucking it in. And then you would take your sponge, wet it, wring out the moisture, and then you can wipe back and antique with it, which gives you a great look. Okay. Okay, we have a question. Let Jenny. So they want to know how long it takes to get an order. We were inundated with orders with ClayShare. Um, we have probably 250 orders, probably 175 still in-house. Normally, on a normal day, I can get them out in 72 hours. But because of ClayShare and everything, and my coverage used the product, so stuff going to him, it's going to take a week or so. If you need something right away, so maybe you bought the kit, and you like a color and you're trying to, you know, put me a note. There's a note section when you order. Just say, I really need this ASAP. Um, but normally, 24 to 72 hours, we're out. But we just can't because of all the kits and stuff that were ordered. Everybody warned me. 
and uh, you know you just can't be prepared you guys have been awesome i am overwhelmed and pleased that you like what i did um okay so let's just talk a little bit more and if you run regular earthenware okay i was moving too fast you can do the same thing on earthenware you know just this fire now if you add the medium to the colors you're going to have a better chance of getting it off because what you got to remember is this is pure pigment in a gel base so basically it's a stain that's staining the wear where you put it now because of the gel you can wipe it back like i did and you can do it as long as you do it quickly and you notice i did a small area if you had a huge plate don't do the whole thing do it in sections so that you can get it back off of there you have a little bit of workability time but not uh, completely okay so let's go back and let's put in some of the uh, gloss medium and a lot of you some of you that ordered if you ordered one of the other mediums because we have three different ones uh, I will either be in contact or I'm replacing it with this one because a lot of people got confused when they ordered and I don't want you to get confused when you do your application of color so gloss medium NT clear this is our unleaded clear specifically for low fire 0406 0406 okay but you can use it for the blending techniques okay um you know what i probably i put it equal parts let me move this out of the way how about how are we doing on time jenny i don't want to okay all right so here's another i'll do it on a larger one so i mixed equal parts with the color concentrate and the medium just make sure you completely stir that up so now so the word medium in the toll world which is where i came from 30 plus years ago is an extender and opener it keeps it open and allows you to manipulate it and move it you have more chance of moving it around than you do with just pure color straight from the bottle okay does that make sense hopefully do we have another question yes um beth asks can you water them down to use for wiping back yes you can water them down beth to use to wipe back so i would do a test when you get your product and see because i know jessica when she does her watercolor effect um she's really thinning it down remember these are pure pigments so they are going to be strong now this color has the medium in it so i'm doing a larger area so you can see it and I'm just making sure, and this is one of Jess's um, rolling pins that I used on this particular one. Okay, so I could do that whole piece. I can let this set completely dry and you can still come back and wipe it back, which is nice. But I'm going to go ahead, damp sponge, I've wrung out the water and I'm just going to wipe it back on those high points. So antique it, in other words, antique it. So this is a darker color, of course, but it's heavier stained. This is not going to, so it's probably a good idea if you're just starting with the product to add the medium 50, 50, and that way it's going to give you more time until you get familiar with it. Okay. Now let me show, I have that pen. Oh, you do Jennifer. Yeah. I, I wish I could order some more. Marie, Paula, can you add water and the extender at the same time? Yes, Marie, you can do both. So I would 50-50 add that to your mix. And then a lot of times, okay, so let's do this. I will take water. So I would call that a wash. Okay, so over here in my palette, I'm putting water. I've just got some water in a bottle. Okay. Um, if your water's really, um, if you're not sure, distilled water, of course, would be better. But what I'm going to do is, this is the mixture, okay, that I've mixed up. I'm going to grab a healthy scoop of it, take it over to the water, and blend it and stir it. And maybe I want two scoops of color. Now, the color is heavier than water. Let me bring this on the big screen so you can see. The color is heavier than water. So you need to keep that stirred up because the color is going to fall to the bottom, and you're not going to get the same application across your piece. 
okay so here's my wash do you see the difference okay very very thin very thin nothing like this one same color but this was thinned down with water so start with water add color to it don't try to add water to your color because you'll end up with a lake before you get a wash of color now can you apply multiple coats absolutely and you can see the more i put on it's going to fall down in the crevices okay don't use anything on the bottoms of your pieces that have the medium in it because remember this is a glaze okay but you want to put your whatever clear glaze you're using and test it because some of them uh, my carburetor showed some with the zinc and some without and there was a little bit of a color change i cannot find any zinc um glaze with zinc in it in my area so i have no way to test that right now the supplies are limited but see the difference so here's one coat here's two and three coats of the same color here's the same color not diluted just 50 50 color concentrate with gloss medium cspo1 okay cspo1 we have a designer and a matte um and we're not even going to go into that because i don't want to confuse people okay any other questions jenny okay so let me uh show you real quick we'll do the okay we just got one miss abigail Can you use straight CC on the bottom and it not stick to the kiln shelf? Yes, you can. You may get a shadow. Okay, so where I had numbers, if those numbers were on the very, very bottom, you might have a shadow on your kiln wash, okay, on your shelf. Um, because I did that when I did my chips, I wrote on, and I'm not, these are glued down, but on the back of them, I have the numbers. So I have a shelf that has 139, 137, 136. So yes, so you can do it and you can sign with it, but it'll leave a footprint on your shelf. Okay. Now, like here is 130, which is blush Cabernet, Cabernet and deep cranberry. So these are two mauves and a burgundy. And look at that, they washed out. And that's with the zinc free amico zinc free hf9 so those may not be colors you want to use okay so somebody asked about the semi brush what to do with it shade it so i mixed up the same color that i have on this already which is aqua splash equal parts with the medium 50 50 okay and i'm going to water load and i'm going to bring my water bowl over here so you can see and I'll back up just a little bit. Okay, so water load, switch it around if your brush is dry, drag off the side, and I'm using the medium sumi, drag off the side, turn the brush over, drag off the side, turn the brush over, drag off the side. What that does is remove the excess moisture and it also shapes it to a point. Okay, then I'm going to tip into that 50 50 mix and I'm going to do what I call tuck that color where I want it. So I'm aiming the brush where I want it. And I'm going to sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right and walk it to the left. Now I'm not lifting that brush off until I need to go get color. If you do this, you're going to get that. You're going to get little footprints, rabbit tracks, I call them. Okay. So once you, and I usually start in the middle and work right to left and back and forth because then it disperses my color evenly and I don't have like a really strong and then I have nothing on my brush time I get. So start in the middle of the area, constantly reload, drag it off to a point to remove that excess, tip into the color, generous tip, depending on the size area that you're using. And this is uh, 04 stoneware bisque is what I'm on. And this pattern is out there on that blog post for you. I have a couple of different sizes. So when this is fired, it's gonna look like this. So you can see the difference. 
And because I have the gloss medium in it, it has a little bit of a sheen where most of the color is built up. Here is just the straight clay. I did not glaze over the top of this. So this was just a decorative piece. I didn't want uh, the glaze over the top of it. Does that make sense, everyone? Can you use straight? Okay, that was the one. Yes. Okay, kind of cool. So I just aimed and the colors are all listed and you can go back on the original uh, clay share post, you know, that I did and you can see all of this uh, that I did before. Okay, so just walk it to the left, walk it to the right. Because you've got the medium in it, it allows you that open time that you can manipulate it and move it. Now, I got over onto my yellow a little bit, so I cleaned my brush and I'm just gonna swish it back. So it leaves that open long enough that you can manipulate it and do it, okay? And move it around. If you want to do um, brush strokes, okay, on your piece, um, I like years and years ago, I used to do these little porcelain bunnies. Um, so the brush strokes are glossy and you can see that this is porcelain, this is porcelain. So it's glossy. So I had the gloss medium with the colors, did my brush stroke and left my background, just the porcelain bisque. Okay, same thing here. So I wanted some, I wanted that contrast. So if you're doing like vases, put your glaze on the inside, do your design work on the outside. Same thing that I did. This is Mako stoneware mug. I did this back in uh, 2014 in a retreat. So this has got your same brush strokes. But do you see this is a matte surface over here? The strokes have the gloss because I've added that gloss medium to my colors before I did. So I call that like spot glazing and see how I just added a comma stroke there straight. Did my graduated dots. Same thing here. You've got your graduated dots. You've got three strokes to overlap to create that little flower. And then I did a different stroke here. We won't go into all that tonight. Thank you, Miss Robin. Hey, Lucy, thanks. So this is the one I started the other night, just showing you. So this is just bisque. Now, years ago, because I didn't have uh, the zinc-free glaze, I used my clear glaze at the top here and I put it on the inside and it's crazed, okay? So it does not work. I can tell you that for a fact, okay? Um, real quick, if you've got a pattern you want to put on a piece, cheap tissue paper from the dollar store, trace over your pattern with a, just a lead pencil and then put your pattern on your piece where you want it use that watercolor marker and i go into this on those other videos also and use that statler tri plus fine liner fine liner to transfer so what happens is that just bleeds so if you make a line with it go slow and it will transfer the pattern to the wear if you don't feel comfortable free handing Okay, that's a way to transfer a pattern. Okay, we have another question. Um, Cindy asks, did you fire the mat first? Did I fire the mat first? Which mat? So this is just stoneware bisque that was a mat finish when it's fired. So this was fired to cone six. So I did not paint in the background. I just painted the stroke work only that have the gloss medium and that is the reason it glossed up so sharon you're not sure if you ordered the right if you ordered the medium with the kit can you send me an instant message sharon uh with your uh order number if you can find it or just a message that you want to add that on and if i haven't already shipped it i can add it and bill you with paypal okay and there you go jenny just gave you my email so emails are better because I have to copy them and put them into uh, an email. That way they don't get lost. Sometimes Messenger gets lost. Mm -hmm. Is the cup usable without overglazing? No, no, because it would just be, okay, could it be used? I wouldn't use it for food. If it was on a vase or something, it's going to be uh, vitreous, so you could use it. Yes, but this one, no, I mean... It's just crazed. It's just a, it's a demo. <laughs> this one will have the zinc free on it when I finish it. Okay. You can also take, uh, you know, here's the smaller pattern that I gave you. 
out there on that blog post so you can see the two sizes. Okay, so this is sumi shaded the same way I did this one, but I use glazes. So if you have a glaze that you like, you can water load, tip in the glaze and tuck it up here. And it would be for a decorative thing only, not something for food. Okay, but that is a way you can do it. Okay, so Debbie is, oh, is the mug dishwasher safe? Uh, without the glaze, you know, I wouldn't handmade hand wash is my my thing, you know, that's what I prefer Luann do not get the tissue paper that has the side that feels waxy. Yeah, so some tissue papers have a shinier side and a dull. I usually put the shiny side up and just go extremely slow when you're transferring so that the marker has time to bleed through. Okay, the marker needs the time to bleed through. All right, any other questions, Jenny? Okay, so we're caught up. So if you're looking, this is 04. This is regular ceramic. That's a plain box that's been carved. I showed you how to do the carving on the clay share. Um, I used the WS tool that's on my website. And then I applied the color concentrates to this. Thinner wash, you can wipe it back depending on how heavy you apply it, you're going to get different looks. Okay. But just sumi shade it on, put a light color, sumi shade the dark on. There's so many different ways you can do it and it's going to fall. So just as you know, all the textured rolling pins, I mean, they're so great because you're going to have the color that antiques itself. Does that make sense? Everybody here is the chart for this is O4. Okay, 04 disc, and then I applied my clear glaze over it and fired to 06. Okay, one, two, and three coats. So remember that this one that I showed you that had 130, 31, and two? That is those three pinks, and they, they burn out, and they turned a little orangey without the glaze on it. So test what you're using before you put it on a big piece. Okay, test what you're using. And we're putting flyers in every order that's going out of here. Hopefully everybody gets one. This is um, the color chart. On the backs of these is our opaque underglaze. We have 61 colors. Okay, so we'll talk about more of those later. So on my, I'm going to flip my cameras back if nobody has any other questions on that. Any questions, Jenny? Okay. All right. So, and here we go. Okay. So what I usually do on my lives is one week I do ceramic with our ceramic products. The next week I do glass for my glass people, my fused glass. glass. Um, and, and then, then I'll show brush strokes. So I knew because, because we would probably have a lot of clay people, people on, I went ahead and did the brush strokes thing tonight. And just, and just, just basic, basic general, general information. information. Everybody, Everybody needs a refresher, refresher on that, that, you know, you know often. Uh, practice. practice. Go, go get, get watercolor, watercolor from the dollar store and use that practice just doing your strokes with that just colored water um you can sorry, sorry i'm echoing. echoing i forgot to yeah i get to talk and i forget to turn my bag off sorry okay so you can put food coloring in your water bowl and you can practice banding you can practice brush strokes with that on the bisque and you can fire that back to an 04 and it goes away. So it's a good way to kind of get the feel of the bisque with your strokes because it's going to absorb differently than what paper is or newsprint or whatever you're practicing on. Just get you a sketch pad and practice. But food coloring will fire away. That's a really good trick. Um, am I better now? Am I not echoing? I have two mics on. Sorry. Okay. Okay. YouTube is still a little behind. Um, okay. Any other questions before I go? What do you want to see? Um, prizes. Yes, we have to give away prizes. Okay, so Jenny is going to spin uh, names and she's going to pick the winner of that number eight, size eight synthetic square shader. And I don't remember what this cost. Like I said, they're about half the price of the um, Kalinskis. Okay, and the winner is. Marie Demar, spell for me, D E 
M A R. Okay. You guys, and just so if you're new to me, you guys can't hear Jenny. I can hear her through my speakers. She's across town over in Arlington helping me uh, tech wise. Uh, my husband used to help me sitting across from me. I and mean, we're training Abby. Um, she's over there. So she's learning a little bit tonight. Um, okay. So the next thing. Yes. And if I don't have your address, okay, or at least message me and say, hey, I placed an order. It should be there. Send it with the order. Or maybe you're new and you're going to buy something, then just say, hang on, I'm going to order. But message me your address, your email and phone number. That way it can I can get you the tracking that you need, okay, to make sure it gets to you. Okay, so Diana asked, okay, um, somebody asked, how do you get in the drawing? All you got to do is comment on, the, on either Facebook or YouTube. Jenny's watching both of them. Um, eventually I may switch over to just YouTube and we'll just share the feed, uh, to Facebook that way. Um, she doesn't, I, it makes it easier for her. <laughs> okay. All right. So the next prize, sometimes I ask questions, so pay attention to what I'm saying. Uh, I did not do that tonight. So we're just going to spin for the number two liner. A lot of times, um, okay. I'm gonna let Jenny spin and then I'll finish that. You're welcome. Miss Lucy. Sharon got my order today and painted a few pieces. Can't wait to fire. Awesome, Sharon. Tag me on it. Show me. Um, I'm on ClayShare and ClayShare Prime, so tag me there, or you can feel free to tag um, on my page if you want to do that. Oh, Ginger, you are sneaky. You knew what I was going to ask. <laughs> so that's cute. The winner of the liner is, I'm sorry. Deb Gardner. I think I have an order in house for you. So I can put that in your order. Okay. If you ordered one of these, I don't know that you did, but if you did and you want a different size, then let me know what that is. But just message me with your order number and then I can, it'll be easier to find it amongst the hundreds that we have sitting here. Okay. So a lot of times um, I will say, and since Ginger's already posted it, I'm not going to ask tonight, but I'll say, hey, what is a brushstroke made up of? And the first person that we see comment wins a brush. Okay, so keep that in mind in future lives when I'm doing strokes or when I'm doing anything. Okay. Um, all right. Did I forget anything or any last questions? Anybody on YouTube or Facebook? Thanks for being with me tonight. Um, I feel a little better. And Paula, you have an order in house for me as well. Okay, Marie, I have one. Okay, just message me the order number then. Okay, or email either one. Okay, before I knew you were on Clayshire, I ordered the colors for Earth. Oh, from Mike, you ordered it from Michael Harbridge. Okay, love the brush drugs. Thank you. Um, I've been doing brush drugs, like I said, for over 30 years. Um, so. Uh, I enjoy doing it. It's one of my, Abby says we have a question. Um, Color, pressure, motion. Very good. <laughs> Diana says I'll message you. I didn't order the medium with my CC. Okay. So Diana, just, yeah, message me. We got that. And I'll go back and I usually read through the comments. I answer anything um, and make sure that, you know, we didn't miss something. Okay. That's why I have Jenny in my ear, so to speak, to help me uh, feed me those questions. All right, guys. I will see you next week. We are going to do glass enamels next week. There may be brush strokes on there. So you may want to tune in and see what I'm doing. Or maybe it's just an interest and you do clay, but you want to get into glass. So uh, we will, I don't know what I'll do, but we may just go over some basic um, outline and application again. That seems to be a hot topic. Okay. Have a good evening. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week.